If you have one of those moments where you're like, oh no, I need a last minute gift to give someone or treat to take to a party, I've got the perfect thing. It only takes two ingredients and no special equipment, but it does require this. The first thing that you have to do is deal with these almonds and chop them up into pieces the size of half of a grain of rice. That's what Marcella says. And this is not a moment to break out your food processor because you'll end up with all these extra dusty bits. You might even end up with almond butter if you're not careful. So it's a moment to just kind of like chill out and let your mind wander. I haven't even talked about the fact that it's crocante. <laughs> crocante is a, a bittersweet Italian brittle. It is much darker than a lot of toffees and brittles are. Okay, I'm just gonna scoop these into a bowl so that they're easier to dump in later. And also, you just don't need all these extra dusty bits in your crocante, but if you want to save this stuff, put it in your oatmeal or your granola or put it on your salad or something. So, you just want some foil or parchment and for extra insurance, a little bit of oil. And you could just kind of smear this around with your hand and honestly, if I was not on TV, I would probably do that. But I'm gonna use a spatula because I'm also gonna show you something with this oiled spatula later. Tease. We're making a candy, basically, a brittle, but we don't need a candy thermometer because we are going so far past any of these stages, like softball, hard crack, hardball, all that stuff, we're gonna go way past that. All we have to do is get our sugar and water going. The water is just gonna help the sugar start caramelizing. That's the starting point, and it's gonna change a lot. It's really, really good to use a light-colored pan. It can even be stainless steel or something like that, but like a dark pan, you're not gonna be able to see the color of your caramel very well. So definitely go for something lighter if you can. During this whole stage, you don't wanna stir it at all. As it's going, you might start to see some hotter spots get a little bit darker. If you do, just like give it a little swirl. What you don't wanna do is stir it or swirl it vigorously. It's going to turn to sort of like what Marcella calls a rich tawny gold. Okay, I think this is rich tawny gold. <laughs> Almonds going in. And now we get to stir and cook for just a couple more minutes watching the color. Now it's starting to smoke, which is a very good thing. Yeah, good stuff. Let's go. <laughs> and you're just looking for this to be like a nice even thickness so that when you go to slice it, it's these like pretty shards of uh, almond brittle. You might think, why do I need a potato for this? Wouldn't an oiled spatula work just as well? Can you guys see this okay? See how much is sticking here? Even with an oiled silicone spatula, this oiled offset, same thing's gonna happen. A lot's gonna catch on here, but the potato, it gets a little bit too, but so much more slides off. The last time I was making this, I actually forgot to buy the potato. So I had apples and I thought maybe that would work. It did. My hypothesis about why this works better than any of these tools, it may have something to do with the starch, but I think it's also just the moisture. Because when my apple went down, literally steam was kind of like pushing against and it worked, it worked really well too. That's it, I just gotta cool. <laughs> And you want it to cool just enough that you can touch it, but not enough that it's fully cold because then it, it won't cut into nice diamond shapes. So it will just kind of snap and shatter everywhere. This is just such a classic cookbook. If you want to learn more about Italian cooking, this is the book you have to have on your shelf. Marcello Hazan is credited with introducing regional Italian cooking to the United States. And when I was working on Genius Desserts, I wrote to her husband, Victor. Marcella passed away a few years ago, but Victor has been her co-author on all of her books and translator because Marcella wrote in Italian and she wrote by hand. 
and I asked Victor what his favorite desserts were of Marcella's, and this was at the top of his list. So this is her version of the recipe, well, hers and Victor's, and then this is the version that's in Genius Desserts. So I wanna give you a heads up. There is a chance that your sugar could go haywire on you. This happened to me last night. If you get some of those sugar crystals that are like forming along the sides of the pot, or maybe there was some still on your spatula or in your bowl that you dumped the almonds in, any of those are going to just immediately try to join their friends and make more big crystals. So there's a chance that your sugar will start to become dry and powdery looking and you'll dump your almonds in and be like, oh wait, this was way too many almonds, it looks really dry. It's not that it's too many almonds, it's that your sugar is also drying out. It's okay, either you put it into a food processor or just bash it in a like a Ziploc bag with a rolling pin and then you can still give that as something that you'll sprinkle on ice cream or over the tops of cakes or just like to snack on. It won't be the same thing as this, but if you grind it up fine enough, no one's gonna know that something went wrong. So this I think should be at a good state and you're just going, oh, you know what? You could do it this way, but I'm gonna slide it onto the cutting board just in case the parchment starts to cut as well and attach to the bottom of micro conte. It's gonna be easier to not have to deal with that. Marcella is going for basically like two inch diamonds. And you'll get some bonus shards that are not a two inch diamond and that is totally fine. Either throw those in with the rest of the crocante or eat them yourself or save them for your ice cream. There, diamonds, mostly. So if you did wanna give this as a gift, during the holidays or whenever. You could just kind of pile things into a jar, maybe tie it with some baker's twine or something, but you could also just take any kind of box and crinkle up some parchment to make a little nest for your crocante, and then just pile all these in. All right, that's a nice little amount of crocante to give as a gift. And our prop stylist, Brooke, did this cool bow thing, um, which you can do, or just tie it with the normal bow, tie it with twine. And there's a lovely gift. But these are for me. <laughs> for two ingredients, this is such a, like, a huge flavor and a huge outcome, a huge texture. And you didn't need to be a candy maker or a pastry chef. You didn't need a candy thermometer. All you needed was a potato. <laughs> So if you want to see more genius recipes like Marcella Hazan's famous crocante with her famous potato, be sure to like and subscribe and check back next week.